Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So we've got a commission piece this week. This is for James and he was looking for a largish black walnut bowl. As you can see, this one's got some condition issues. So this makes it a good candidate for this. And what he wants is branch inlays down the sides and uh, a white type resin to, uh, you know, go with the bowl. So white on the black walnut typically looks really nice. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this bowl up for James this week. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. And of course, anytime I get a thumbs up will help the analytics. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms is absolutely crucial. Please leave a comment down below. All right, let's get a glue block on the bottom of this, and then we can start hacking and slashing. Uh, I get asked a ton of questions about the um, the hot melt glue that I'm using here. So here in Canada, I just go to Canadian Tire and buy it in bulk. I don't think that it really matters the quality of it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the cheaper, the better. That was in an electric frying pan. And uh, as you see, and I just stick the glue block on, in the frying pan and stick it on the base of the bowl. That one I turned a little nipple on, on the center of it so that it would correspond with the bowl so that things lined up pretty good. But anyway, I get a lot of questions about that. I've been using, using this mounting method for phew, over 20 years now. And um, if you're not using it, give it a try. You won't regret it. And one other thing on all of this. So I'm a twice turn turner. I rough bowls out thick. They dry. I put them back on the lathe. So if you rough them out properly, where they're one inch in, th in wall thickness for every 10 inches in diameter, you can eyeball that glue block on the bottom. And in most instances, it won't be an issue. You'll have plenty of meat there to turn away uh, to trim your bowl and sand it. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn this out on here. I'm not married to this. I'm just going to cut this out and then reevaluate it after afterwards and I can adjust it. Uh, I could just go down like this and kind of do this number. But, you know, I like when I do these cuts, I like to put a little bit of flare in them like this. Um, I find they just kind of flow better into the rim. Now, you know, there's probably some of you saying, well, why don't you just leave this? Well, so th this is a branch and here's the pith right here. And if you were to leave that in your work, there's probably a good chance over time that this is gonna develop some cracks and split splits. So, and here's another little, I don't know if it's a little crotch section. This is really hard walnut, so I'm not really sure Maybe it was part of a crotch. Anyway, um, I did pour CA glue in here when this was drying, but I can see that this crack goes all the way down to about there. So, you know, if you don't do something like this, you're gonna lose probably two inches off of this bowl, which, you know, this is a really nice piece of, of uh, black walnut, and I don't wanna do that. So anyway, that's why I'm doing this, and I know that there's going to be some haters in there say, I can't believe you're, you're doing that to this beautiful piece of walnut. Well, you know, that's, that's what we do here. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to draw it out on the other side, and then I'm probably just going to use the jigsaw. And um, once we get the jigsaw, the bulk of this out, we'll be able to clean it up and adjust it and go from there. Well, 
Well, it's funny, you know, things happen for a reason. So this is, I remember I pointed out that crack that was coming down from that crotch piece. Well, here it continues. And I never even seen this. And once we started cutting into this, it opened up that crack. So we're gonna have to alter this the way it looks yet again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some thin CA glue down here to stop this from migrating and then redraw this and cut it on both sides again so it's even. Uh, that's just a real good example of why you don't leave cracks in your in your bowls unless you you know unless you absolutely have to or that's the way you want them to go. Um, it's just a good practice to remove any cracks from your work. Or this may happen. And by the way, I always use a Starbond Thin when filling any of these cracks. Uh, it's a great aid when you're trying to dry your work. If a crack forms, you can use this thin CA glue and it usually stops the crack from migrating. So, I guess we gotta redo this. So in this case, we're dealing with dried wood and the jigsaw creates a lot of vibration. So that's why that crack migrated. So by dumping that CA glue in there, I'm hoping that the, that the, the crack won't migrate any further uh, when I use the jigsaw again. All right, let's clean up the opening. It's been a little while since I used this on the channel, but this is a Typhoon carving bit. Uh, I got this one at Lee Valley. It is um, 3 16 in diameter and an inch and a quarter long. And I have the quarter inch shank on this one. And it really moves a lot of material very quickly. Uh, this, this walnut is very dense and very hard. And as you can see, it actually moves the material pretty good. And just clean it up with some sandpaper to take away any fuzziness, because you will see that in the inlay if you leave it behind. Here I'm cutting the groove for the inlay and this was maybe a little bit too ambitious to try and do the branch inlay and the groove at the top, the inlay at the top as well. And this is stabilized maple branches, um, that way they won't shrink in the future and fall out. And here I'm setting it with the thin CA. This is probably one area where you could probably use medium. I don't know if I would use thick but um, you could probably get away with using medium CA here. But I always, uh, like I said, I rarely do I use anything but the thin because I like the fact that it really penetrates well. Well, that's one side. <laughs> See you in a little bit. All right, so there's both sides. That's taken probably about an hour to do. So what we're gonna do is get this on the lathe and grind this all back and get our plastic on and then get some resin done. Here I'm using the Cutsall sanding disc to grind this back. Uh, I used to use a a ton of those little flap discs to do this uh, but this this grinding disc uh, and again I got this from Lee Valley 
does a really good job of, of cutting that back. And then once you've got it down, you can try and shear scrape the surface, um, but it, it is really um, hard not to, to chip out or tear out those branches. So I thought I'd try it with the uh, the sanding disc. The, the lathe is running in reverse and the disc is running forward. And, you know, it worked uh, not too bad at all, really. And of course, one of the issues you have is, um, you know, you have to contain that resin in the inlay somehow. So you've got to grind these um, branches down inside the, um, the form. But I ended up going right into the, the side of the bowl a little bit with it. So eventually I had to just turn the, uh, the branches away and, and basically hit the reset button on the inlay aspect of this bowl. All right, so I've come to the conclusion that to try and do the pour in the rim and do the pour on the sides is just too ambitious. Um, things are just not going right. I ended up touching the inside of the bowl with that grinder. So what I'm going to do is just glue this, these, these branches back in place. We'll do, uh, we'll do the pour today and then we'll see if we can do one in the rim afterwards. It might look really cool to maybe even have a contrasting color in here, or maybe we'll just go right with the same, um, same inlay, same resin. So, you know, it was worth a shot, but it's just not working. All right, well, it isn't perfect, but it should work. Some dams. I want to have a little area where some resin can sit. Let's hope we don't have any leaks. All right, let's mix up some deep cast. So like I said, we're going to use a deep cast from Designer Epoxy. Pretty much an impossible thing to know how much of this we're going to need. I'm just going to mix up um, 12 ounces and we'll go from there. I'm going to use the Crystal Ice White. So what I'm going to do is do the majority of the pour out here. When that's done, I'll bring this into my clean room, level the bowl, and then finish the, uh, the rest of it off in there. Let's see how this goes. Just a word of caution here if you're going to do these uh, this type of a pour. Make sure you don't pull the plastic tight against the branches. Leave a little bit of space for the resin to flow down and to fill in all those little areas. If you leave it tight against the branches, you're probably going to end up with a bunch of voids. There, I think that's pretty good. All right. See you guys in a couple of days. All right, so it's been a couple of days. I just peeled off what plastic I could and duct tape. As you can see, we had a 
pretty big leak here. It's not really going to affect much on the top here. Maybe an eighth of an inch. No big deal. Uh, it looks good on the outside and on the inside, but it's a, it's a heavier resin pour on the inside. You'll see that when I flip the camera around. Anyway, uh, I think that it's going to be pretty good. So let's get the, uh, the Hercules going here and get this trimmed up so we can do the inlay in the rim. All right, well, before we carry on with the project, I thought that I would just show you some of the stuff that I've gotten in the mail from uh, subscribers. Uh, you know, this is absolutely awesome. Um, as some of you may know, I'm left-handed, and they don't typically make left-handed hollowing rigs. So I made that comment, and a couple people suggested the D-Way tools. Um, I'm not going to say the person's name that sent me this, but this was a gift. You know who you are. Thank you so much. As you can see, there's an outrigger, and I'll be able to use this uh, left-handed. And I can't wait to try it, and we'll certainly show that on the channel here. Johnny Tolly, absolutely awesome. He makes these beautiful little ornaments. He sent me one, and he sent me one that's already kind of been done and just needs to, you know, be matched up. Uh, he makes these calipers to fit inside of these. I will list all of his details in the description down below, but uh, he does that. But maybe the coolest thing that he sent me is this. This is a this is a tailstock extender, or not a tailstock extender. It goes on to the live center, and this isn't screwed all the way on, but it gives you a really long reach. And combined with the tailstock extender that I have, I'll be able to use this when I'm coring, and you know this will certainly help to keep blanks from coming off the lathe and it will actually move the head the tailstock further back so that it doesn't interfere with coring as much uh totally awesome thank you so much johnny i really appreciate it i will put his details down below next thing is the osprey from mike hunter from hunter tool systems mike sent this along we're certainly going to give this a go on the channel for sure as you can see, it's got a rounded shaft. This is the number two cutter. And um, really looking forward to using this tool. And I mean, the great thing with this tool is you'll be able to rotate it at any angle that you want for that cutter to, to work properly. And along with that, he sent along a couple of 316 square shank tools, uh, a reverse one and a forward one. Now, one of these will fit in my captive system for the one-way coring system. And I believe that I could probably adapt it to, to fit in here as well. I should also mention that this is a sharpening jig and an extra cutter that gets sent along as well. And these, uh, I think they call them the ticklers. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll show this on the channel and I can't wait to actually use it. And last but not least, this comes to us from Joyce, Joyce Bowley and I don't, I've never used this stuff before, but it's Caradon granite chips. Sahara is the color. So I don't know if that's a man-made stone or what it is. It would probably look really cool inlaid with maybe a, a black resin with it kind of coming through it. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot, Joyce. I really appreciate it. We will see all of this stuff on the channel here in the near future. Thanks again to all that have sent this stuff. I really appreciate it. And if you do want to send me stuff, there is my address is in the description down below. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. So this is the Osprey, and this is uh, was sent along by Mike Hunter. And as you can see, it's got the rounded shaft on it, so you can present it to the wood at any angle that you prefer to cut at. And, you know, it, it performed very well. Uh, those carbide cutters do a really good job eating up that resin. And the other thing, too, with, with the end grain on these stabilized branches, they're not exactly a joy to turn either. But the Osprey and the Hercules do a good job of, uh, of really whittling away on that.
here I'm using the Hercules on the on the rim. Uh, the great thing about the Hercules, it does have a flat spot on the bottom of it. And I do find that when you present it to the work, like the manner you see me using it, that it cuts really, uh, really good. Uh, it's strong and robust, so you can work further off the tool rest than, say, maybe the Osprey. But regardless, both of them are pretty cool tools. Um, I really enjoy the Hercules, and I need to do some more exploring with the Osprey, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be one of my go-to tools as well. And you'll see when I go down the inside of the bowl, I will have this tool tilted on its side a little bit, maybe almost 45 degree angle. And by doing that, you're, you're pretty much negating getting any catches. So that's why I do it that way. All right, so I thought the camera was recording. I looked back and it had shut off on me. So this is, uh, we're all trimmed up now. And you know, at this point, it might be wise to throw a coat of finish on this. Um, I really don't want to. I'm just going to cut the groove in this and I think, you know, as long as we're careful, I think I'll use like a syringe to put the inlay in the rim and then I think that uh, it'll be fine. What I am going to do though is tape off along the inside here near the top and on the outside. There are some voids, but, you know, not very many, but I just want to make sure that when we cut down through this, that it actually doesn't wick out through um, a void that's there. So that's what I'm going to do. In addition to all of that, what I'm going to do is take probably medium CA glue from Starbond and put it in the groove as well. That way it can't wick out through the end grain as well. So if you're curious why I decided to use the medium here, it's because if you use the thin, the thin will actually wick out through the end grain and then cause the staining that you're trying to prevent. So the medium won't do that. Uh, you could certainly use thick here as well. All right, so we're inside my clean room. Uh, this is the Pro Series. That way we'll be able to work with this tomorrow. Uh, it is mixed up proportionally from the first pour, so there shouldn't really, the only place you're going to have witness lines is here anyway, but I don't think that you're going to have very many because it should, it should blend in pretty good. If you're wondering what that noise is, I was filling up this syringe. Now I put the tape around here and... I've got it just proud of the surface, hoping that, you know, if we do have any overflow that it's, you know, it's going to contain it. I, I did level this with a level both front and back. So hopefully we don't have any problems. There, I think that's going to be pretty nice. See you guys tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. Tape pulled away here in two spots. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, there is, however, some voids and I don't know if you can see them in there or not. A couple on the outside as well. So you've seen me do this before. This is the crystallized white pigment. And all I'm gonna do is put it in with some thin CA from Starbond. Don't need a whole lot. And basically what I'm going to do is just fill all along here, this whole thing. Uh, this, you know, this was too large to put into the pressure pot. 
and that is the benefit of a pressure pot when you're doing this kind of work that you know you can these bubbles probably wouldn't be here if this was in the pressure pot but I realize that you know not everybody has one and you certainly don't need one you just may have to fix some stuff that's all So anyway, I'm just moving it all around that whole inlay. Then I'm going to set it with the accelerator. Still one spot right there. There, I'll just go around and do the rest of it. I'll see you guys on the lathe. Just cleaning off the glue with the 5 8 bowl gouge here. Uh, again, I'm shear scraping. I do find that on the outside of these turnings, particularly, that shear scraping is very effective as far as cutting the surface clean. Um, you could certainly use the Hercules here or the Osprey if you want, but those that long cutting edge on that swept back grind on the on the Ellsworth gouge is a real benefit and uh, I highly recommend shear scraping the outside of bowls. It will virtually elim eliminate any tear out that you have. So the gouge has been freshly sharpened and I'm using it on its side just to trim away any of that excess glue and to um, cut those end grain branches that are up near the very top of this bowl. On this piece I decided to sand it from 60 to 800 uh, just because of the resin mainly. I probably could have stopped at uh, 400 or 600, but uh, I went all the way to 800 and it gave us a nice surface. All right, exciting times. First coat of finish. We're going to go with the wood bowl finish from General Finishes. The reason I went with this finish is because the stabilized branches, the stabilizing resin, is not food safe when it's cured. So this piece is not a functional piece and is meant to be a centerpiece. Well, there you go. As far as I'm concerned, walnut is king in North America. I mean, it is an absolutely gorgeous wood. Side grain on this piece is quite nice too. So this is going to take probably three coats. Anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow for the second coat. Buffing with Triple E compound from the Be All Buffing System. I didn't buff before putting the first coat of finish on. Uh, if this was an all resin piece, I certainly probably would have gone in that direction. But with it being kind of broke up, there was no need for it. And then, of course, cleaning with methyl hydrate. Well, good morning, people. This is the second coat of wood bowl finish from General Finishes. I'm pretty pleased with that. Nice even coat. I mean, it. this is going to be one of the pieces that when somebody walks into your home and they see it sitting on your table, they're going to go, what is that? And that's what I like to make for wood turnings. So this is probably going to need another coat. Maybe not. We'll have to see. If not, um, I'm going to do the third coat the same way. And then we'll see you when we're doing the bottoms. Have a good day. Like I usually do, I'm using the vacuum chuck to hold this piece. And I think I sand it to 320 on the very bottom of this piece. No need to go to 800.
All right, let's have a last little look at this beautiful bowl. And this piece ended up being 12 and a quarter by four and three quarters high. It is absolutely beautiful. Maple branches, stabilized maple branches and crystal ice white tinted resin. Awesome, awesome. Here's the very bottom. Still need two more coats of finish and that will be ready to go to its new home. And the new owner is absolutely ecstatic about it. So that's great. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I really enjoy making pieces like this for people. Uh, I really wanna create future family heirlooms. That's, I've always based my business on that. I, I, when, you, when you die, I want your kids fighting over my bowls. <laughs> that's, that's what I want. Uh, I really enjoy what I do. And you know, hopefully it shows in my work. And I, I know that I get a lot of really awesome comments from people about, about my work and I really appreciate that. So hopefully that, you know, as you can see, I mean, it, it takes a while to make stuff like this. You just don't make this in a day. It's days and days and days of work, putting finishes on. Um, I prefer to work with difficult finishes like this, but they're better finishes. They're gonna last longer and that's, all, that's really all there is to it. Uh, you could use a mineral oil and beeswax type finish, but that's a constant maintenance finish and you are never, ever gonna bring the beauty of the wood out like you will with this type of finish. So that's why I work with these finishes and they're very durable. They last a very long time. If this thing isn't used, it'll probably last forever. It's gonna sit there. Um, if it's used, you know, I've seen bowls that have been used for years and they still look the same as the day that they were bought. You just can't throw it in the dishwasher because some people do, believe it or not, some people do. Um, but you know, you, you, in the sink, quickly wash it and dry it. That's, that's, and you can do that with these bowls because they're sealed up well. You can't do that so much with maybe some other, some other type finishes. So that's why I like to use these finishes. Um, the stabilized branches. Now, I actually haven't done any branches in quite some time. Two summers ago, I actually sold some bowls and we had a really, really humid summer and the branches shrank after they got to their, their destination and I ended up having to fix them or, or, or replace them. So, you know, that's why I went with the stabilized branches. Uh, it, it is the best way to go, but you know, it doesn't make the pieces uh, food safe anymore. That's up to you. If you wanted to put a salad in this, I wouldn't have any issues putting a salad in it, but you know, a lot of people, they want food safe finishes. So I understand that. Um, yeah. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this week's project. Uh, speaking of comments, I do read each and every comment and I do answer every comment. Um, maybe not the nasty ones, cause yeah, I get those too. Uh, but uh, what I'm finding is if you have a question, I'll answer it. And then if you have another question after that and you put it in the same area, a lot of times I won't see it because YouTube Studio doesn't notify me that there's another comment in that comment uh, section. So if it's an important question to you, then you should probably do, make another comment and say, reference my last comment, and then that way I'll see it for sure. Um, but yeah, please comment below. Of course, that's where we get the winners for our 35,000 subscriber giver bowl, giveaway bowl that's, that's coming up next. And you know, this week has been a, been a great week. I mean, literally in a week, I've, I'm probably gonna gain over a thousand subscribers uh, just this week alone. So thank you so much for doing that and helping me support my business here on YouTube. All right, that's it, I'm done talking. Don't forget about our sponsors down below, sandpaper.ca, Starbond Adhesives, Hunter Tool Systems, and Designer Epoxy. All your discount codes are in the description down below. So head on down there if you need any, uh, any materials from them. All right, that's it. <laughs> Till next week, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell. Thanks for watching.